Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today with us. And my name is Vincent Heribon. I'm the current director of IFRA Nigeria. IFRA Nigeria is a research institute based in Ibadan, the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. Um, and our idea was together to uh, plan a research seminar uh, with West African historians uh, based in different West African countries. Uh, so that we can hear uh, what the kind of research being undertaken in West Africa at the moment. The idea was to seize the opportunity offered by uh, all these lockdowns, basically, to do something online and to be able to hear each other, to hear each other's voices, uh, despite the boundaries and different uh, quarantine measures and so on and so forth. Um, today, it's my pleasure to, have a, to host a second uh, event for this seminar. Uh, for the second event, you might notice I'm with the speaker. I'm going to introduce him in a second. He's just here. Um, uh, we are in Ghana. Ifra Nigeria is in Ghana. So my colleague, Dr. Sir Mangro Martino, is here. My colleague, uh, uh, Juliette Rafle, is here as well. You can see on the screen as well. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to, to introduce Dr. Samuel Adujamfi, who is the head of the department of the history and politics department here at uh, Komen Kuma University of Science and Technology. I believe the nickname is Tech, am I right? Tech? KMST. Yeah, the, the nickname is yes, Tech. The nickname uh, is Tech. Nickname is tech. Uh, Sam and I have worked together uh, before on a project on a textbook for history secondary school students in English speaking West Africa. But today, Sam will talk about his own research and he will give a paper entitled The Changing Landscape of Mission Medicine and Hospitals in Sub Saharan Africa. I believe that's after the Second World War or before the Second World War up until today, am I right? Yes, yeah, so, so generally I'm looking at highlights of the various epochs so that from uh, colonial period, right, right up to even contemporary times, you realize that my focus largely is on applied history so that I try to experiment, right, to do a lot of crazy stuff, you know, really uh, follow strict traditions and rules here and there. Uh, but this presentation will largely focus on, uh, if you like, a literature paper, review paper, which uh, the Christian Journal of uh, Global uh, Public Health has published. Uh, I, I felt it's necessary we have a conversation around that because it will stimulate some thought and enable others to also share their particular anecdotes that they have in their respective communities as it, con as it concerns the role of missions, right? And uh, missionaries spe specifically. So like uh, Vincent said, I'm Samuel Levy and uh, I'm going to present on uh, the changing landscape of mission medicine and the hospitals in sub-Saharan Africa. I shall uh, quickly go into my presentation and I trust that we'll be able to have some interaction. Thanks for making time to want to uh, share this moment with me and with the team so that we all can uh, be able to do much with that. So let me uh, share the screen uh, quickly and see what we can are we okay? Okay. Good. Uh, voila. Voila. I got it. <laughs> so uh, I shall spend time to take off and to discuss uh, some of the issues. Uh, clearly, the, the, the role of uh, missionaries, right, uh, specifically when I look at missions, my objective is to focus on the activities of uh, uh, Christian missions, and largely churches, so that if you were looking at Islam, in the case of Ghana, you would have found the uh, Asuni, the Tigania, the Amedia, the Amedia that has done a lot of work, if you like, in uh, Ghana, and for that matter, my own hometown, Formina, uh, which I, 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 I deeply appreciate in terms of uh, secondary education and all that. But my focus, my predilection this afternoon is largely to focus on uh, missions with respect to Christian missions. And so 
with the movement of Christian missions into Africa, suburb of the Sahara, you would realize that the main agenda was Christianization, or for a better one of a right word, evangelization of the local population. Uh, as part of their strategies to make converts and in furtherance of the practice of their faith, these missionaries have constructed schools and hospitals engaged in public health campaigns. They have, have been embarked on charity for the poor by provision of cheaper social welfare programs, among other things. And so largely, we have seen the church missions and groups playing a lot of significant role. Indeed, their public health roles have been crucial in incorporating the principles of biomedicine uh, as a viable option in Africa's pluralistic medical tradition. And you, you see that uh, in my work, uh, Edith Fionnawari 2018, Westland Mission Medicine in Asante, we try to define what mission medicine is as a form of contrast to traditional or indigenous or native medicine as a result of a kind of sweet interplay between the social, moral, psychological dimensions that are associated with a kind of care that exudes or emanates from these two levels of faith, i.e. the Christian faith and the traditional faith. And, and here, I'm not driving or trying to delve into syncretism. But clearly, you realize that in as much as the missions have been critiqued about their roles and what they have done uh, in terms of watching being on Lucas, whereas uh, colonization continued. And uh, if you come to uh, Elmina and Cape Coast uh, in Ghana, you see the dungeon, you see the chapel on top and all that. In spite of the critical questions and the issues around that, we know, among other things, that uh, the medical missions, right, were strategically put in place to ensure that they would have access to the native population to Christianize, to Christianize them. It has also been argued that the African belief of social causative theory, which regards diseases as the actions of demons and witchcraft as a result of misdemeanor by individuals also allowed the local population from time to time to embrace some forms of practice, which was not only taking care of the population in a sense of practical biomedical sense, but also counseling and prayers and all that. The native population could easily, if you like, appreciate such aspects of medicine. In my work with Owari in 2018, I tried to establish the contrast in there where sometimes the Christian faith, for example, were believed, right, to only provide counseling and physical cure, biomedicine, as against the traditionalist with their traditional priest and priestesses providing some spiritual care and construct. However, we look at the kind of uh, merging point where indeed prayers are said in both spheres and counseling to that extent, the clinic of the Christian faith and also the traditional sphere seem to have certain social causative definitions within the scheme of things. Broadly, either you are looking at Ghana or the then Gold Coast, or you are looking at Northern Rhodesia or Southern Rhodesia, or you're looking at South Africa, or you're looking at Tanganyika at the time, or you're looking at Tanzania or Kenya, or Sudan, North Sudan, among other territories, you would realize that some form of Christian actions and interactions, in a sense, allowed for some social inclusion and also created a certain space for the Christian mission to provide some social care and support. Having said that, there are several literature and research which, I mean, pay attention to the role of missionary activities across the sub-Saharan region. 
And you, if you look at the work of Hardiman, 2008, if you look at the work of Doyle, 2015, and if you look at Jennings, 2008, among other researchers, they broadly have looked at a, a kind of sphere where the, the, there, are, there, are, there are emphasis and highlights on major activities within the epochs of African history and for that matter, Sub-Saharan Africa. However, the puzzle, what is missing is that they have not really curated or curated, if you like, I mean, C-U-R-A-T-E-D, the, their research, the, largely some of which are empirical, which I, I, myself and my team have copiously referred to, did not curate their studies to reflect the kind of continuities and discontinuities within the provision of medical care by these uh, medi medical missions or Christian missions at the time. I attempt, therefore, to look at that, relying on a certain theoretical undergirding or construction. And here, I am quick to add that uh, my interest this afternoon is with the, uh, the Christian medical praxis. It is essential for us to appreciate that the missionary theory of praxis draws our attention to the desire of the missions to touch base with the people. It holds that missions engage in medical interventions as the examples of Christ in the Bible. And here you can refer to the work of Vaughan uh, M. 1991. Look at the Christian te text in Matthew 25, Luke 10, 25 to 34. Critically drawing inspiration from, if you, if you like, the kind of uh, expostulation or the kind of message that uh, Jesus Christ, who is the messianic hero, propounded or preached to them, but more so grounded within the broader uh, theoretical construction of some academics. So in Africa, Christian missions employed strategies that would draw indigenous Africans and prepare them for heaven. So missionaries at inception, inception defined healthcare provision as part of Christianity and the responsibility of Christians arising from the Bible. And that is very critical. So that they seem to want to amplify the holistic ministry that their messianic hero, if you like, as postulated, as would be found in Luke 10, 25 to 34, among others. It further suggests that Christian missionaries have used teaching and healing as Jesus did as major requirement for the spreading of God, God's love. And on that basis, and, and within the same score, the, the, the missionaries understood the need to emphasize the welfare of poor and vulnerable groups. They need to emphasize on women and children. In fact, Genesis in 2008 reported, among other things, that in Africa, in the early days of missions, there was emphasis on the provision of maternal and child care. And that is critical. Again, within the theoretical construct, sin and suffering are intertwined. And here, permit me to quickly say that the, there is also a certain sway towards the emphasis on sin as a theory. In, in, in essence, if you look at our work, myself and Anwar in 2018, our focus was on the Wesleyan missions in, in Ghana and in Asante for that matter. You realize that there, there, there was that belief and philosophy among the Wesleyans, among others, that sin in itself could open the door for an individual to be infected or to be sick. In that regard, sin separated man from God and had the tendency or proclivity to affect the, the foundations of an individual's uh, well-being, either in a physiological sense or in a social, and for that matter, in a spiritual sense. And so if there was any solution to that effect, then there is a need to evangelize 
in expostulation of the text to ensure that individuals who hitherto were not saved will be saved. And in, the, in that process, could also procure healing in that regard. But healing would also come on the back of a physiological sense because the Christian faith right, pushed forward to introduce biomedicine within the peripheries of the African states where the European medical machinery could not reach, among other things, as a result of limited infrastructure, limited personnel, and the general lack of interest. And these are some of the essential things we need to look at. May I proceed quickly to look at method? I do not have my time. So based on, based on the theory of missionary, I mean, I mean pra practices, and emphasis on sin, I rely on this scattered and fragmented data in breaker, so to speak, in, in some regard as a result of the works that uh, several authors have looked at, uh, of whom I've mentioned a few, and I might go back to some of whom are in the class of sociologists, historians, anthropologists, um, in, among other sources in the social science, have uh, constructed, I look at continuities and discontinuities. And in fact, uh, I am interested not only in the status quo, but what has changed over time across several territories in sub-Saharan Africa, which largely in that regard have witnessed Christian operations or missions. For example, I've used fragmented or scattered information from Spencer, Doyle, Karanja, Bebe, uh, Mazzaneri, Diel, Calvi, and Montevenelli, Wilkinson, Edu Genzi, and Oware to create a better and better still construct my theme. And here I quote the mission of mission hospitals. Geographically, I have been able to extrapolate specific examples on Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Kenya, Eritrea, and Ghana. I don't know whether I have the time to do that. But concerning changing landscape of mission medicine, including its related uh, broader themes like staffing of mission hospitals, sources of income for mission hospitals, shift from the emphasis on sin, extension of services, change in ownership of mission hospitals, state and mission hospitals, as well as mission hospitals and sustainable development goals, as, as the SDG, and even if you like, in earlier version, Millennium Development Goals. I have constructed some, uh, if you like, continuities and discontinuities of say, and provided a country specific examples, including Tanzania, Ghana, South Africa, Togo, Zimbabwe, Zambia, sometimes to extrapolating from sources generic to Sub Saharan Africa and Africa in general. Cameroon, Rwanda, Nigeria, Mali, Liberia, Chad, North Sudan, Madagascar, Congo, just to state a few. These were sourced from 17 empirical research or sources. The, uh, and, and here I would want to refer to uh, Edugen V. et al. 2020, from which I am uh, copiously referring to in this presentation. Uh, indeed, uh, if you look at my uh, discussions on this subject, the mission of missionary medicine. I mean, missions made initial efforts to reach vulnerable groups, just to go through it quickly. They further engaged the tools of literacy and numeracy, formal education, and also medicine to engage the local populations they encountered in several of these territories I've mentioned in person. The strategy was to draw people into medical centers where the gospel was shared. And I'm sure several people would want to share anecdotes. In Zimbabwe, scholars have reported that mission medicine was used as a bait to draw people to hospitals and medical centers to be evangelized. And I believe the work of Fabi and uh, Mazineri and the others have really, you might look for some of these sources. A significant number of mission medicine focused on maternal and child care or health care. Now, the African Inland Mission, AIM, in colonial Tanganyika, right, also played a, a significant role. For instance, they put up a maternity ward at Kola Ndoto, 
and to educate and provide Western bet procedures and preventive as well as curative medicine for the sick. Indeed, after independence, mission maternal clinics in Tangayika were twice the number of those constructed by the government. It is important to lay such emphasis. You would also recall that missionaries provided affordable care for the vulnerable, needy, and the poor. Thurston has reported, among other things, that in Kenya, over time, here you see that mission hospitals targeted the poor, orphans, and I mean those individuals who were suffering and had challenges within Kenya, especially those who were confronted with health challenges. Also in Uganda, missionaries in their early years reduced and waived most of their healthcare costs based on patients' economic status. And I, I can continue on and on and on. But above notwithstanding, the narrative has not always been that of praise. It is reported that missionaries in Uganda provided second grade services for Africans who were seen not to be, I mean, prospective convicts. And, and, and I would be glad if, I mean, during the discussion segment, we could have some anecdotes and, and, and some experiences I mean, shared by people. But it, it is also important to reflect on the fact that uh, medical missions contributed immensely toward the introduction of a new medical system, which suppressed African indigenous systems. It is essential. And let me just say this with, with emphasis, with some degree of emphasis, because in my work with R. Owari 2018, Wesleyan Mission Medicine, I discuss as a focus study or a focus study, the kind of tensions, the push and the shove, for example, about questions on witchcraft, about question about closure of witch funding shrines. Uh, some, some of these works have been done in earlier studies by uh, uh, Makaski, Sakrabondi, and Abrewa, and all that. But, but the question that seemed to challenge the indigenous philosophy, indigenous faith, and the ideals, and what they seek to do uh, to allay their own fears and to also uh, serve their interests, including that of their social and physiological well being. But I shall turn my attention because of time to look at service provided by mission hospitals in Africa. Indeed, mission medicine responded to neglected and stigmatized persons due to the fact that they suffered from diseases like leprosy, convulsion, or epilepsy, among other diseases. The indigenous people considered or defined as unclean in consonance with disease as misery, you would find that the missionaries made effort to rush in largely to offer support to those individuals who were left untreated because they were stigmatized by tradition. And there's no time, maybe we'll have time to have set conversation. Now, aside from the provisions of healthcare, other medical missions, I mean, trained local people to become practitioners. In Madagascar, for example, the London Missionary Society offered training programs in biomedicine to local Malagasy. In some years, local people provided services, including nursing, midwifery, and vaccination programs. It is instructive, it is instructive, uh, however, to add that medical missions sometimes encourage uh, governments to open or build asylums to care for the mentally ill. It is important that historically, and let me share a quick focus study. I mean, I write my focus is on medicine and on healthcare in, 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 in Africa. And I mean, my, my specific focus is on Asante. But you realize that there are challenges when you look at mental health policy in Africa. Look at how I'm, I'm sweating and serially trying to take shots. Thank you very much. Make sure I'm well taken care of. Oh, no, no, don't worry. <laughs> I like I like giving anecdotes. Sure I like that. Fine. I'm sure you're fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> I like that. Don't worry. I like that. So do that. I like that. I have 10 minutes. So on and on, you will see that, in fact, they were, I mean, they trained people, they provided health facilities, and the examples, as I've shared, are available everywhere. But you see changes in the landscape of mission hospitals, in spite of the 
work they've done, they've gone through a certain continuities and discontinuities. You see that in the question of sources of income for mission hospitals. You see that there were challenges with funding because they will largely rely on their, I mean, on their home country or the exact core mission group that despite them to Africa. And where such funding could not, if you like, meet the changing health needs and challenges as a result of the need for expansion, as a result of the growing population within the peripheral regions, which were smaller within the period under review, and it's changing over time, they began to have challenges. In fact, then they began to fall on funding from international organizations and also from non-governmental organizations that were indigenous to the communities or states that they were off offering support. But quite often, they've also received support from national governments and bilateral and multilateral donors, uh, including also the, the, the use of uh, user charges, right? Uh, then we've seen some changes with the introduction of national health insurance. Uh, on that subject, you might want to read S. Edigenfi in the edited volume, Epidemics and Health Systems in Africa, where I compare the Rwandan case and that of Ghana in terms of the national health insurance system and the Motete system in Rwanda after the genocide under Paul Kagame's effort to make sure that there is some degree of universal health care and the bridging of gaps within same uh, between the poor and the vulnerable, I mean, the poor vulnerable populations as well as the rich and well-to-do. But in terms of staffing, we realize that African medical personnel, uh, for example, have played a significant role. Uh, but you've also seen outsider mission groups coming in to support. We've seen volunteers, expatriate doctors, who are not necessarily Christians and from Christian mission groups are throwing their support behind said groups over time, as we have seen. Again, we have seen some shift from emphasis on sin, because now it is no longer you being a sinner, but as a result of the question of misery. If an individual is going through physical suffering and pain, we need not apply a certain social positive theory to ascertain the cause of his pain. There is a need to rush in and to take care of that individual. And said changes has come about as a result of persistent collaboration between this mission groups, uh, governments, and secular organizations, among others. We've also seen them extending their services beyond the already known traditional sphere. For example, the treatment of malaria, the treatment of uh, eye challenges and, and leprosy, to, for example, looking at new and emerging epidemics and diseases like HIV AIDS and all that. In South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Ghana, in other territories, we've seen the Christian mission groups persistently within the 20th century, even from the 1980s, playing significant role, giving counseling and all that to support and to also provide strategies to uh, en en engage people on public health, moving from uh, if you like only curative emphasis on curative care to palliative care to uh, the, the concerns for uh, non-communicable diseases and other emerging strain of diseases. And you see, for example, in Ghana, when the president of Ghana introduced the COVID fund, there were Christian groups and churches that donated to the fund. Today, we are still talking about question about the fund, whether the government has really judiciously used the fund. My conclusion, medical missions targeted at poor women and children shifted from emphasis on curative to palliative, preventive and public health pro programs contributed towards reduction of Africa's burden on HIV and other emerging diseases across the continent, build schools and teaching hospitals to complement government efforts. There are, I mean, a lot of examples in my data. And you might want to, you might want to read, let me be quick to say that around this time, you might want to Google and download it the changing landscape of mission medicines and hospitals in sub-Saharan Africa, 
altered by S. D. David Maria Mamasia Nakusana Benjamin Dompredakwa and Lucky Dombi. Thank you very much. I rest my case. I am open for further discussion. Hope Cyril will take another shot of me in this current state of mind. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Sam. Um, Can I get up a little? Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course, you know. <laughs> um, yes, stop. So we'll, um, thank you, Sam, for this very rich and lively paper. Uh, it's alive. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, can I ask all the people who want to ask questions to keep them short, please, so that we can uh, give a, anyone a chance to ask questions. Uh, so if you want to ask questions, should I ask you maybe to raise your hand so I can see you? Maybe I can see you if I uh, make you appear in such a, okay, in such a way. Uh, who would like to ask a question? Uh, uh, Don't see any hands up. Does anyone want to ask a question? Please. Matthew, can you hear us? Matthew? Maybe you need to unmute. Yeah, there you go. You're unmuted. Yeah. Please ask your questions. The question. Um, all right. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation, sir. And um, it has really been. Um, Expository and um, enlightening. Um, I only have a question. Um, what about the role of the of uh, missionary medicine in contesting the medical space with the traditional um, medical system? That is one. Number two is talking about the introduction of a um, surgery system that has actually like become problematic for Africans even in this contemporary period. Okay, talking take for example. If you can take your time. Can so you? that I can pick it. We're taking notes, Matthew. Do you mind repeating your second yes. question, please? Sorry. All right. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, like, that's a problematic surgery system or surgical system, and how this has actually contributed to maternal mortality in some African countries like Nigeria during the colonial period. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So let me quickly respond to that. Uh, it's an interesting and also a puzzling question, but I, 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 I write quite often also along the, if you like, the tangent of uh, the question of a clash between missionary medicine and largely also European medicine or Eurocentric or European oriented healthcare strategies as against indigenous medicine. Indeed, when they sometimes want to even define uh, aspects of our, our work as heathen, I'm, I'm trying to locate a note I have here. For example, let me just quote Hadiman to, as, as a, a, a point to, to establish something. He argued that medical missions provide all-round therapy intended to civilize the so-called primitive people, getting them to Christian modernity, quote and end of quote. And these are some of the things you would see in Gold Coast, you see in Nigeria and some other areas, especially when you have clashes, everything about the African was questionable. If you read my work on interest groups, issue definition, and the politics of healthcare in Ghana, and the politics of traditional medicine in Ghana, with emphasis on Asante, I look at this particular politics, this particular attempt to solve indigenous medical systems and to make sure that European and Western form of medicine are superimposed, right, on the African medical construct. And so such, I mean, imbalance and such context continued over time. I'm just trying to recall the work of, uh, I think, Fairman and Janssen on the social basis of health and diseases in Africa. And you see several of such contestation also around the question about uh, medical hegemony and who takes control of what and all that. So indeed, uh, even though 
I, I, I want to believe that my presentation has not been wiggish history, but to just sing praises for the, I mean, uh, Western or uh, European missions. However, if you refer We raised some of these tensions between indigenous medical practitioners and the Christian missions trying to establish their hold within the territories they found themselves. Quite often, it was as if, and sometimes vehemently, to jettison or to solve or push aside the traditional ways of taking care of themselves. Let me give you an example, some examples. Pieta de Maris, an European who had come to the Gold Coast at the time, really attested to the efficacy of the African herb, the use of carica papaya or the propolis and all others to, to, to cure several maladies have been attested to by the Europeans. However, if you read the writings of Crook, Crookshank Brodier, you would also see that he begins to rather accuse, for example, the indigenous Priscilla, and, and I refer to the traditional priests whom the European or several Euro Eurocentric writers refer to as fetish priests, as the indigenous Priscilla, this Crookshank's work refers to same as a rogue, a rogue, you know, as a thief, as a charlatan and all that. But even if you look at the literature, either within Nigeria or in Kenya, or for that matter in Ghana, and broadly within the 1930s Gold Coast, the various trends to, for example, streamline indigenous medical practices were curtailed by the British colonial administration. You would realize that within the period, uh, whereas uh, the, 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 the school of tropical medicine and tropical medicine units were burdened and growing and, and gradually being systematized and growing in, in Great Britain and elsewhere, uh, in the case of the Gold Coast, it became a strife between the indigenous healers and the European administrators under the guise of the indirect rule system, superintended by the kind of faith they also expostulated as against the traditional norms and philosophies that they believed in. And the debate continues on and on. Indeed, you would agree that the European, and I come to the second question, the second leg, the, the, you realize that the, the, the the kind of medical care that would be provided for the Africans at the periphery were rudimentary, and we need to understand that. Indeed, the Europeans themselves did not have enough medical infrastructure, enough personnel, among others, to be able to feed the periphery. And that is why you see European hospitals in the first instance, whose primary occupation was to take care of the European civil service. And for those African elites who found themselves within, you know, such setup, and then some royal elites who then come up. So largely, at the periphery, I would agree, and here not to conjecture, that there will be some degree of experimentation and trial and error. It is on the back of same trial and error that I argue that the medical diagnostics and prognosis within the current biomedical physiological care still, I mean, travels within the domain of trial and error. That is why within the COVID-19 situation, an African diagnosis and the African prognosis and the African social capital still needs to be emphasized and needs to be investigated. I hope I've been able to attempt answering your question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew, for your question. That, is someone else interested in asking a question, please? Abdullah Mohammed, uh, please. Well, yeah, yeah Abdullah Mohammed, please. Good listening. Yes, my question is that Sudan United, Sudan United Mission or Sudan Interior Mission in Nigeria, in trying to provide medical services, they deviated in or they engaged in role in converting the native or the Muslim or the pagans to Christianity. Right. Is that what obtainable in other parts of Africa? Yes. I, I, I mean, indeed, until the latter periods, if you like, like I said, of, I mean, from the maybe mid 50s up to the 60s, you see that in the earlier period, like I said, the emphasis was on conversion 
and, and, and several scholars have not shifted away from that position. In the case of the Gold, Gold Coast, it was same. Christianization meant social change. It came on the back of education and the Salem or the boarding schools, which also attempted to shift the people from emphasis on traditional philosophies. So in the case of the Gold Coast of Enfadamata, Ghana, you see that medical mission and care emphasize that, not only for the sake of goodwill, but also for the sake of having access to the people so that they could Christianize them. So indeed, the ultimate aim was not only to heal the sick. Again, even though it was, and you cannot take that away from them, it was to expostulate their beliefs and philosophies and faith from the, their Christian Bible, it was uh, the tool and the agency to be able to do that included education. And it also included the provision of medical care. And that kind of synergy between the, the missions and the then colonial uh, uh, administration, right, at the time, subsisted. So to a large extent, there was some degree of joint project to an extent to help and to an extent to also have access to the people. Having said that, we need to give credit to the fact that opening up of the periphery of Africa to biomedicine largely did not come about as a result of oh. colonial administration machine. Think you hear me right. But it came about as a, uh, yes, I have. Severally, the activities oh, hear me when I ask. of Christian uh, missions and also other missions that we made over time. Thank you. I don't think it's necessary. That is my point. If you can put uh, uh, Mariama. Yeah, I'm trying to do yeah. so. G Gerardo, you had a question, I can see. Hi, Gerardo. Yes, Are you Manchester? Hi. Hello, Vincent. Yes, I'm in Manchester. Quite Great. Great. That you are, that you are in so please, I ask you a question. Yes. Uh, thank you, doctor, for this very, very helpful, very enlightening uh, talk. I have actually a couple of questions which are very much about the specificities of the Ghanaian case. So the first is about uh, comparing the Wesleyan missionaries with other missionaries that were active around the same time. So clearly they were very active in medicine, but I wanted to know from a theological point of view, if for example, the Wesleyan missionaries interpreted disease in a different way from say the Basel missionaries and those people like Chris Tyler who translated the Bible into three, even that you translate, because you mentioned the gospel as a source for thinking about this, about the very concept of what is at stake in colonial medicine and all that. Uh, the second question, and uh, hopefully I won't make um, a, a fool of myself, I always found it fascinating how, uh, if I understand it correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, forgive my pronunciation, but there is this distinction between uh, a duro and a bibiduro. So I wanted to know... A and a bibiduro, is that what yes, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Right. I wanted to know where does that distinction come okay. from? If it's right. something that was promoted by the missionaries, if it was a reaction of the people to the understanding that there is medicine okay. and African medicine and that kind of, so I want to know a bit about the, the concept and the, the linguistics of it. Thank you right. very much. Yes, first question about theology. Yes, yes. I, I, I know I'm, I'm quite puzzled with the specific question on the, the, theolo the, theolo uh, the theological construct of the specific missions, but for example, if you looked at the uh, prophet uh, Nakaba, uh, where who are referred to as the 12 apostles, the 12 apostle churches across Ghana, you see that uh, in a sense of, uh, maybe I would be comfortable to use a philosophical construct instead of a theological construct, right? You, you realize that as a result of your belief in what I refer to, I refer to in my words as spiritism, right? Uh, being, I mean, spirit possessed, and I mean, I mean, catching the spirit and being driven by the force of sin to 
uh, diagnose the cause of a problem and to also uh, go through prognosis, the cause of treatment of that problem was quite largely accepted by the indigenous people who believed in the social causative theory. And for more on the social causative theory, you might read P.A. Messi 1975, Medical Systems in Ghana, where he looks at the medical pluralistic nature of the Ghanaian I mean, environment and the coexistence of various streams of medical traditions, uh, i.e. Judeo-Christian influence, Arabian Islamic influence, uh, coexisting with traditional influences and philosophies. And so you find among the 12 apostles, I mean, cutting across the entire, uh, if you like, Ghanaian societies, the emergence of, I mean, closely after that, you see the emergence of the traditional Christian churches, right? And the, the question that comes up is syncretism, right? A fusion of the Christian theological construction and the traditional philosophies blending. <laughs> I mean, I mean to uh, express not only faith, but also all ideas in society, including health and well-being. So you find that the, the, the prophetic churches that will emerge, the Pentecostal churches that will emerge and all that, uh, the people were able to embrace them because when the traditional healer did a clinic, right, and there was gyration, he was jumping here and there and all that, and he caught a measure of the spirit from above. You could see the prophet from the 12 Apostle Church also gyrating, jumping here and there and catching the spirit. So there was some close proximity you find that, for example, what will allow for Catholicism, for example, in their first mission, specifically in the Gokus, right, to have failed and but to have worked in the latter period, is the fact that there is the belief in tokens and symbols, right, uh, as a result of the intermediaries, beliefs in intermediaries of they, I mean, represented in the forms of deities and symbols. So the Catholic crucifix, for example, uh, was, I mean, easily something the Africans, and for that matter, the Gold Coasters of Ghanaians at the time, could easily imbibe because it was symbolic uh, and it was in close proximity, I mean, with the African faith, or for that matter, the indigenous worship systems and ideologies. Having said that, it is it was in the same close proximity, for example, with the use of talisman and talismanic powers as uh, the territory I study so much, Asante, uh, largely being influenced by Muslims and, if you like, Islamic culture, right? And so you find that Catholicism gained roots along set lines. And the belief in praying through, for example, uh, uh, the Holy Mother Virgin Mary was so significant for them. And the indigenous people could easily identify with that. For example, if you go to the coastal region today, somewhere along the stretch of Cape Coast and Elmina, you find a Nana Antona, Nana Antona. It's a derivative from the Catholic saint, Saint Anthony, Saint Anthony. And so largely you see some degree of kind of syncretic, if you like, uh, framework coming up. But amongst the Wesleyans and the uh, Presbyterians, for example, uh, they came in strongly, for example, with, with, a, with, a, with a Basel missions, for example, the Presbyterians, agriculture became a significant tool. For example, cocoa was first introduced into Gold Coast, not by the Tekwashi, but by the Basel missions. And when they were settled at the Equapim range, right, in Ghana, they did experimental farms right, in close proximity with the local people. But more so, they, I mean, preach the kind of practical theology that was also constructed under the use of, the use of catechists or some uh, uh, mediational role from indigenous people who would be groomed to take over. Indeed, such philosophies 
were accentuated as a result of, if you like, literacy and no numeracy, uh, that will rise over time. And remember that the mission schools, and here, I, I mean, I also write into education, but I don't know whether I'm, I'm helping with a question. But, but so it, it was an amalgam of a certain social construct I to, to, I wouldn't say indoctrinate, right? But in expostulation of their Christian philosophy and ideologies, uh, some of the specific mission groups uh, could easily be accepted by the people because of the nature of their worship. But for the Anglican Church, for example, and within the colonial period, it was elitist and highly recommended for an individual who would want to hold political office and all that to be an Anglican, attend the Church of England. More so, the Asantene Prempe himself had Christianized, had been Christianized, and he himself had become an Anglican. So that among the as, as the Asante, if you like, uh, Asantene court, and for that matter, the king, several of the individuals continue to attend the Church of England or the Anglican Church today. And so there were several strategies that were used, if you like, to pull the people in here and there. But if I may, uh, a draw and a baby draw. Etymologically, a draw means medicine. So you open the Pandora's box for another theoretical debate and discussion. Because when, when the indigenous Ghanaian says, <laughs> Vincent is laughing. I don't know what no, I'm no, 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 carry on, carry on. <laughs> 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 when the indigenous Ghanaian says a drug or medicine, it does not only denote the use of herbarians, herbs, bark of trees, stems, and roots of trees who come to that, but it denotes a certain act that is an invocation of a spiritual force or power. And it comes in the, I mean, if you read some of my works, well, because of time, uh, I discussed some of these things leading to the question about construction of deities and all that. But it denotes power. It denotes the intangible and it denotes the irrational or the mundane. To that extent, there are certain social forces that can define and dictate the course of an individual, either well-being or social destruction. Yatune Dro, he has been attacked with a certain contrary force. And so within the African, for that matter, the Ghanaian medical milieu, you will find that within the social causative theory, the individual who is sick is not only sick physiologically. We might have to ascertain whether someone has done something against that person through the use or the invocation of the powers of a deity or the use of the powers, the negative forces of witchcraft. And I will not go into white witchcraft, black witchcraft, and red, we don't have time. But it is the word medicine, a drug, which means the person has invoked a certain measure of power against the other to destroy him. For more, for, for further uh, expatiation on that, you might want to read uh, my work on uh, uh, traditional medicine in Ghana and where I emphasize a lot on for example, the question of diabo, where an individual has a problem with someone, the person feels offended, he takes egg or snap, which is an European influence, or a local brewed drink appetition, and pours it and invokes the power of a deity, either before the person or in the absence of the person. It can also flow within uh, uh, the, the, the discussions on the, the question of imitative magic, the question of voodoo techniques, and all that as you find within the Benin region and others. So a drug is a big term. Medicine is a big term within the social construct. 
Epipidro is herbal medicine. And <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it, it, it can be constructed. You, you've asked indeed a thesis. This person is indeed a thesis person. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying my best, right? <laughs> but, 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 so the, the one, and I try to draw distinctions in some of my writings. So in, in aspects of my writing, I argue, for example, that uh, there is someone who only uses herbal medicine to cure. But even that, the belief that an individual is cured is not only contingent upon the pharmacopoeia or medicinal content of the herbs. However, it is based on the supernatural forces or powers or the blessings of Obad, the, the creator, the deity, uh, who has made so. And so to an extent, you see an amalgam of the application of help. But, but I write on the transitions. My paper with you, you guys should give us the opportunity. So I discuss a lot of issues on that uh, for another time. OK, so so I don't know what I've tried, right? Uh, that's uh, that's uh, wonderful. I'll, I'll ask you more, but that, that, that's okay. very satisfactory for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. I, I, I believe, I believe um, uh, Juliette has uploaded us just to paste the links for your publications in the chat. Uh, so thank you, Juliette. You know, just so people can access right. your, your so publications there. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Uh, you also that's good. So yes, you can also receive uh, Sam's email address if you're interested in talking to him more directly. Uh, um, would uh, Mar Mariam, sorry, sorry, who wants to ask a question? Mariam, I want to quiz you. Yes, please. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yes. You did mention, Dr. Samuel Yes. You did mention uh -huh. that um, um, healthcare delivery was a method of conversion, right? Thanks for adding. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, women, children, and then the poor where they are targets. But right. today we realize that the mission hospitals are patronized by everybody. Exactly, why that's true. You think, why do you think that in that period they were targeting this group of people? You could see that they were vulnerable groups. Why were they not targeting the entire populace, but right. women, children, and then the poor? Okay, so it's, it's a difficult question, but I mean, indeed, if you look at the, the literature broadly, Along the lines, when they even tested with the young and the, and the vulnerable groups, including children, yeah. they did not get the kind of, if you like, full feedback they wanted. And that is why there will be such extension. So if, if you look at the literature, you will see that. But, but the other question is that if you look at the, the missionary practices, okay. indeed, it is the sinner who needs help. And I touch base with the Wesleyans with the mm -hmm. same discussion. And so being sick was not only physio a physiological question, mm -hmm. but it was a question of an individual separation from his maker. Okay. And so the more you were vulnerable, the more you were detached from your faith. And, and that when you are the right kind of faith, then you would have a certain kind of impetus to be able to come to that saving knowledge and more so to be able to imbibe the kind of health and well-being that and, and, and you said you rightly said so because yeah. by imbibing same by imbibing same you are also saying that you have rejected the forms of philosophies and beliefs that you sought for to procure treatment or care for yourself I know I've not been able to exhaust it entirely, but I think it's a very useful question. Okay, so you think critically about it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. We've got uh, um, a last question, I believe. It's our last question, yes, from EDA Yijie, please. Uh, uh, hello, Dr. Jaffe. Uh, thank you for your talk. And uh, this is a little bit more like a sideline question, not directly. Uh, relevant to your kind of uh, your article, but uh, I think maybe I need some wisdom from you as well. Because uh, I noticed that also the 
uh, medical landscape in Ghana, the history of medical landscape in Ghana, is not only has this connection with the colonial world, and also for a while, especially in 1960s, also have this connection with the socialist bloc, and uh, for instance, like USSR and Czechoslovakia, and a lot of Ghanaian uh, medical personnel were trained in those countries. So I'm wondering, do you know some very good literature like uh, discussing about that aspect of the uh, Ghanaian medical landscape? Thank you. Okay, so yes, so so good. Yes, I, I, it's, it's true that uh, with the emergence of a kind of call for African renaissance, a kind of African epiphany and intellectualism and all that, there was a call back to revert back to African, I mean, and to tap from indigenous knowledge. However, you see that, yes, it was again going to be a gradual and a systematic shift from the West. But in a Ghanaian context, for example, specifically, we've remained non-aligned for a very long time, yes. And even though non-aligned, we have imbibed and also related well with both the West and East, I mean, of Europe, and largely also along, for example, the socialist construction. But if, you, for example, you look even at the area of Nkrumah, he will still, I mean, deal with the West and West for our matter, uh, look at the United States and all that, to uh, look at building of Akosomo Dam and, and all that uh, tendencies that would be, uh, that will tilt toward capitalism and all that. Having said that, yes, within the medical landscape, uh, the USSR, the Czech, uh, the Czech, and also even Cuba, I mean, they've contributed immensely, especially within the, the, the latter period of the 20th century. Uh, there are several works you might want to look at broadly when you want to look at the Ghanaian literature. You might want to look at the work of uh, Stephen Ade, uh, Western medicine in Ghana. And largely, he looks at a lot of the, you know, earlier historical questions, right, that looks at the medical setup and settings and all that within the colonial period, even up to the independence and all that. But there are several, uh, I mean, uh, issues that come up even after Adair's work. The fact that uh, we still have to also read that way